T-minus two minutes. This is the launch of the Scathy Cathane Mining Lander and Cathane Detection Orbiter, KDO, aboard the Saturn C3X. After getting the payload to orbit, the third stage of the C3X will relight to, uh, to get the payload to a translunar injection as the payload is destined for the moon. This is only the second payload that the EDB has, has aimed at to send to the moon, the first one being the Paliac Fuel Depot, and this will be the first one to make a landing on the surface. The KDO will separate from the Scathy lander once their booster gets them into lunar orbit, and then the booster will handle descent orbit insertion and the first part of the descent burn. We are now T minus 1 minute and 10 seconds. This is a very important mission for the EDB because if it can successfully demonstrate resource extraction on the lunar surface, something no other space agency has done, it already has a flood of contracts from private companies wanting access to such technology. A success on this mission is expected to allow the EDB to begin testing its first super heavy lifter, the Saturn C4X. T minus 40 seconds. T minus 30, and we continue to be a go. T minus 20. T minus 15. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And liftoff. We have liftoff of the Scathy Kethane Mining Lander aboard the Saturn C3X. Launching out of Cape Canaveral for the moon. All systems are nominal in this early phase of the flight as the two F1 engines powering the rocket up off the launch pad. Pitch program has been initiated. 35 seconds in, 1,870 meters, 114 meters per second. Fifty seconds, four thousand forty meters, one hundred ninety four meters per second. T plus one minute, six thousand four hundred and fifty meters, two hundred and seventy meters per second. The vehicle is now supersonic. Passing the region of Max Q. One minute, 25 seconds in, 15,460 meters, 525 meters per second, 4.7 kilometers downrange. One minute, 45 seconds in, 25.5 kilometers, 802 meters per second, 12 kilometers downrange. Two minutes into the launch, 36 kilometers, 1,095 meters per second, 23 kilometers downrange. Getting ready for first stage cutout. And that's main engine cutout. First stage separation is good. And the second stage is lit. At the 2 minute 30 second mark, we were 63 kilometers in altitude, 1563 meters per second, 62 kilometers down range. And that is rising quickly. 2 minutes 50 seconds, 80 kilometers in altitude, 1617 meters per second, 95 kilometers down range. 
getting ready for payload fairing separation here. Payload fairing separation is dependent, of course, on altitude and pressure. And uh, payload fairing separation is good. Fairings have separated cleanly, uh, no damage to any any portion of the payload. As the C3 axis uh, second stage continues to bring the payload into orbit, uh, we can discuss some of the key things that the EDB would like to establish with this test. Of course, uh, this is simply a test, this Gathi Cathane mining lander, and uh, it may turn out that certain things do not work as intended. For instance, there is an open question about whether a cathane can be converted into useful fuels, such as MMH N204 and other chemicals that are used for propulsion. MMH and N204 are especially of interest because, of course, the EDB has already placed the Paliac fuel depot around the moon, and that fuel depot uh, is built to contain MMH N204. So, uh, monomethyl hydrazine and uh, nitrogen tetroxide. So, if cathane can be can be converted to those fuels, that would be helpful, or either one. There's also the question about how efficient it will be to produce fuel on the moon and bring it to orbit. As we pass the 4 minute and 40 second mark, the rocket is 157 kilometers in altitude 2,995 meters per second and 361 kilometers downrange. So, simply because you can produce fuel on the moon doesn't mean it's necessarily uh, doable to bring it to, into orbit around the moon quite so easily. It depends on the conversion process, the efficiency of that conversion process, and uh, the efficiency of launching something off of the moon using MMH N204 or whatever fuels that we happen to make. If uh, only a low grade fuel can be made with a low ISP, it may be more efficient to launch a high ISP fuel from Earth. So it does depend on what kind of fuel we can, we can produce on the moon, if any at all. The plan for the rocket is that the third stage will burn about 1,500 meters per second to complete the orbit around Earth. And then following that, we'll burn a further 3,000 or so meters per second for translunar injection. It will fall slightly short of the full translunar injection amount, uh, the full amount requiring about 50 to 100 meters per second more. And that will be done by the, the booster on the actual uh, mining unit, the payload. Uh, the booster is a Estes engine and uh, about 8.9 tons of fuel, uh, that fuel uh, also being MMH N204. The Kethane Mining Lander, Kethane Mining Lander, uh, uses RD-856 uh, rockets, which are actually the vernier thrusters used in the Skylon uh, rocket, and uh, those burn UDMH N204. Rocket is now above 225 kilometers, uh, 5,700 meters per second, and 900 kilometers downrange. We're getting ready for second stage cutout here, and that's the second stage out. Um, at, uh, second stage separation. Some unusually long delays here. And uh, we have reports that we, we have lost telemetry on the rocket. Uh, the, and uh, we have lost uh, visual, though we still have audio. Uh, and there's the visual. Third stage is lit. However, the telemetry system is still not, uh, not sending back any information. So the third stage will uh, burn for its pre-planned time roughly half the stage length. And uh, we will hope that will get the rocket into its correct orbit. Mission Control is currently trying to troubleshoot this and uh, we will occasionally see the simulated view uh, as they try and 
figure out the systems that might be up. Uh, we uh, briefly lost uh, simulated data, <laughs> and, uh, so uh, things are going a little bit awry here, unfortunately. Though the rocket, uh, we have the onboard camera view, and the rocket seems to be all right. Uh, fortunately, this is a portion of the launch where there are no pitch changes. The pitch uh, program is complete, and it will continue on a zero degree pitch for the remainder of the launch. So, fairly direct at this point. Simply needs to burn for its prescribed time. And as long as we don't have an overburn, it should be, should be in orbit safely. I should clarify that, of course, the problem is that the, while we can get the camera data, uh, that is on a different signal than the telemetry data, and it's the telemetry data signal that we have a problem with. We can also issue commands, and so that's not a problem. If we, if Mission Control had to issue a command to the rocket for some reason, that command uh, should be, should be obeyed. But it is, of course, uh, difficult to send any any decent commands without uh, some basic data, and that's what we're trying to reestablish here: is the ability to get that data. Telemachus reports a signal power loss, and so the current suspicion is that there is a failure of the Telemachus antenna on the payload itself, or perhaps uh, it. Uh, it experienced some sort of uh, issue, either that or somebody forgot to put one on. In other words, we would have had a Telemachus antenna on the Saturn C3X's second stage, but not the payload. I can't imagine why that would be, but uh, that is something that we will have to look into as a possibility, since clearly we lost signal right when the second stage separated. Assuming that it uh, continues as programmed, and it's programmed burn time, uh, we are expecting the third stage to uh, go out any time now. And there we have it. So the third stage is out. Uh, waiting for reading from, from uh, ground stations. And also from tracking satellites, hopefully we can get some sort of uh, data on its current orbit and uh, it looks like it's in. Uh, we've got an orbit of 380 by 181 kilometers based on the current velocity and altitude of the of the craft. So the third stage was successful in bringing it into orbit. A slightly low orbit on the periapsis side but uh, according to mission control this is serviceable. So with that, uh, we will soon be able to bring you the translunar injection, the third stage, bringing the Scathy Cathane Miner and the Cathane Detection Orbiter into a uh, trajectory towards the moon. So, thank you for watching this coverage of the Scathy Cathane Mining Lander launch, and we will return with more information about the translunar injection. Welcome back to coverage of the Scathy Cathay Mining Lander mission for the EDB and also of course the Cathayne Detection Orbiter that will be working with the miner to, to uh, detect where Cathayne supplies might be and to direct where the Cathayne miner should head. On its first orbit of the Earth the mission uh, went out of communication range at the transfer point and so it had to make a second orbit in order to uh, be in communication range so that uh, Mission Control could send the correct signal for transfer. Uh, we are able to send signals to it and here you see it's settling down its fuel and lighting the third stage at T plus 2 hours and 32 minutes. The 7 RL10s uh, relighting successfully. This mission so far has uh, had quite a number of harrowing points of course 
Uh, the lack of communication on the first orbit was a little bit troubling, though uh, it has been experienced before and uh, wasn't a problem because the, the Scathy was of course in a safe orbit. But uh, more harrowing was the loss of uh, telemetry after the separation of the second stage. And so more, more details will have to be probed into that issue. Right now though, we can talk more about the actual payload. And uh, at the top of the payload is the KDO, the Kethane Detection Orbiter. And the, the key part of that is the Compact Survey Unit. And that will be detecting the Kethane. It has two uh, large XT3 solar panel arrays, uh, much battery bank capacity, an inline reaction wheel, and also a cylindrical service module that carries uh, 0.22 tons of MMHN204 that uh, powers a uh, one kilonewton thruster. So uh, just a one kilonewton thruster for the KDO, and uh, that is sufficient for it. The SCATHI itself, the Cathay Mining Lander, has uh, quite a large uh, capacity for electric charge. Uh, it has the same two uh, XT3 solar panel arrays, but it also has uh, two RTGs, radio isotope thermoelectric generators, that will ensure that uh, even when it is not in, in sunlight, it will be able to uh, recharge enough to supply the antennas with power. The lander has its own independent antenna to connect back to mission control, so it has uh, sufficient range to communicate directly to Earth, as does the KDO, of course, so they are independent of each other when it comes to communication, though they can piggyback on each other's signal as well. Below the lander is the service module, the, the booster, if you will, with the Estes engine, and that will complete this burn for translunar injection. It will bring the, the orbiter and the lander into orbit around the moon, and then also begin the lander's descent. The lander itself has about 1600 meters per second of delta V, so it will handle most of the descent itself. It does not, however, have enough delta V to subsequently launch off of the moon and return to orbit. That was not the intention. It is simply there to test whether it can it can uh, drill for cathane and then convert the cathane to a useful fuel. Of course, uh, for that purpose, there is a converter unit and the drills, a medium converter unit and two external drilling units. The Cathay Mining Lander also has uh, hydrazine tanks and RCS that uses hydrazine. Since the engines on the Cathay Mining Lander use uh, UDMH and N204, it was decided not to configure the RCS ports uh, for uh, the usual MMH N204 and instead go with hydrazine instead. Hydrazine being a mod propellant. Coming up on the end of this burn now, about uh, about 15 seconds here. And there you have it, the third stage is out and now we will wait third stage separation so that the Estes engine can uh, continue with the uh, TLI translunar injection. Third stage separation is good. As this engine reports lit and and uh, the burn is uh, good. Solid thrust from the Estes engine. The Estes has up to 40 relights on it and we'll use a number of those during this mission. And that burn is complete. Uh, only needed to be uh, roughly 50 meters per second. Not a particularly taxing burn for it. Uh, it has uh, roughly 2,100 meters per second worth of delta V available to it. And so the the SCATHI 
Cathane Mining Lander and uh, Cathane Detection Orbiter, the KDO, are on their way to the moon, departing the vicinity of the Earth, and we expect it to reach the vicinity of the moon in about three days, so it will enter uh, the lunar sphere of influence in uh, three days' time, and at that point we will uh, continue coverage of its activities, and uh, hoping that the that the entire mission will be a success but there is a lot of there are a lot of pieces to this mission and it's a very complicated mission uh, certain parts might fail while others succeed for instance uh, the cathane detection orbiter could succeed in detecting detecting the cathane uh, but then the lander might fail to drill for it or on the other hand the lander might be fully functional but the cathane detection system would fail and in that case uh, we wouldn't know where to have the lander touch down in order to do its mining. So we hope you enjoyed this coverage of the start of the uh, SCATHI mission and uh, hope you will rejoin us for the, the conclusion of it or at least where we find out whether the mission was actually a success. So uh, thank you again for watching, we hope you enjoyed it, and with that, uh, this is the EDB signing off.